The Japanese government is urging its young citizens to drink more alcohol. This seems kind of odd, even for Japan. But what's the real reason? Welcome, everybody, to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. David, what's going on in Tokyo? Japan's national tax agency has launched a sake viva campaign, Andrew, wow. to try to get the young people of Japan to drink more so they can get more tax money, support the izakaya industry that's ailing, and possibly even make more babies. What? All right, guys, uh, we're going to go break this down from a micro mid to a macro. If you're excited about this video, please do us a favor right now and hit that like button. And then after this, check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. But David, let's get into it. All right, let's look at it in the micro, Andrew. Basically, it's a campaign from the government. The government may potentially own a lot of shares in the alcohol industry, maybe in the cigarette industry, who knows? So there may be some double dipping going on, but they want the youth to drink because the alcohol consumption patterns from the younger generation, Andrew, from that like 80s and 90s stereotypical salary man, mm -hmm. dropped like 20, 30%. Exactly. Ever since 1995, actually, uh, alcohol consumption has been slowly declining in Japan, you know, so nobody is drinking as much as the 50 year olds, man. Those guys that were knocking out on the subway just like this after throwing back shots of like 10 sake shots. Yeah, those days are like dwindling, basically. Yeah, I but mean, those that, guys were very hardworking, and, and they did a lot for Japan. Obviously, that whole workforce, right? Right. Well, I think the younger generation's looking at it like, mm, I don't want that, <laughs> and then the older generation is like, mm, yeah. I want you to get freaky with habiki. <laughs> And uh, please uh, drink more Suntory so your son is horny. Mm, arigato. Um, and then I think like, it's funny because I look at America and I'm like, well, one, you would never have to convince kids in America to drink at a younger age. Oh, they no. already want it. Oh, they, they, want, they want that and more. They, they want everything. They're trying to drink at 12, all right? Yeah. And then uh, also, if anything was ever advertised by the I, our IRS, we would totally do the exact opposite because we just hate the IRS. Well, hate but, the tax man. Yeah, their tax man is telling them to drink more alcohol, which, you know. Anyways, that's a different dynamic. But yeah, I guess like the whole birth rate thing, like was that even going to work just because like people are going to supposedly drink more, get more, you know, loose and a little yeah, There was this comment that was, like, <laughs> that was like, oh man, you want it to become Alabama with all the unplanned pregnancies and what, growing up and whatever. Like, I don't know if that's really the plan uh, because I don't think that would really affect birth rates as much as it would... Like lowering the cost of living in the city, I feel like that would do more for raising a family. Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. It sounds like almost like an old uncle from like 80 years ago's like idea, being like, mm, make them drink more, yes. <laughs> the old like Yakuza bosses, mm, yes, uh, the more the Japan has a problem, uh, baby, solve it, yeah. Uh, moving on, Andrew, point number two, why does Japan have a shrinking population? South Korea also has a shrinking population. China, surprisingly, even has a shrinking population. Yeah, I mean, actually, this is happening in a lot of societies around the world. Even America, obviously, American families are getting married later. They're having less kids. Um, more people are caught up in the lifestyle, living in the big city. The kids will cramp their style. They cost a lot. You want a lot for your kid. Your standards are very high. Now you want to send them to private school, yeah. and then you got to do all this and that. I just That's think tough. in the Confucian sort of like accomplishment accolades based culture you're trying to send your kids to the best schools make sure they get the best grades if they do a sport or an instrument they're like the first chair or a starter so they're the best at that sport it's just like a lot of pressure and i think when you really compare it globally it's just like it's not in a weird way it sounds so stereotypical it's not that fun to be an asian parent so we're growing up in a more westernized global society we know what's fun and what's not fun even though we still went through the non-fun way but we can only imagine how not fun it'll be to enforce that non-fun, high-pressure childhood on a kid of our own. We didn't even like it, but we went through it. Yeah, that's true. I mean... Like, why do you want to... Like, it's almost like you're like, I know it's good because it makes the country strong, but I don't want to do it. And if you have to do it to, like, more than two kids or three kids, man, it's just like, you can't do that and eat a hundred nummy things from, like, a hundred different cultures and be a foodie at the same time. It's just too much commitment. You're splitting your, your focus pie too many ways. Not only that, of course, in China, Andrew, they had a one-child policy for a long time, which really dropped their birth rate. Now it's back up to three childs uh, being allowed, but it hasn't really rebounded. Dude, why? Would, I don't understand how they thought, hey, everybody, you can have three kids now. Where are the kids? Oh, yeah. How come you're I was so excited. I was just waiting. Like, I just had one, uh, but I was waiting for you to change the rule. I have, like, two or three. The government's like, uh, 
what happened to this uh, baby boom that was supposed to happen in China? I thought I thought we just opened up the floodgates and then people say, oh, okay, we want the five kids. It doesn't work that way. Andrew, and the final macro point, I mean, what are some real solutions, man? Like, how does Japan and obviously the rest of Asia, but specifically Japan, like, fix all their issues that they want to fix? Because they don't want to open up the country because they're really strict on COVID. You know, they're not generally too open to, like, immigrants. These are not, like, immigrant countries like the New World, for example. So, Andrew, to bring it to the macro, what are the solutions? Man, these are really macro trends that I think are actually just across the globe kind of common so it's hard to come up with solutions but i do know japan has to try things out i think this even though sake viva campaign sounds kind of silly i think it's just one of many campaigns that they're going to try they got to try creative solutions uh they might have to get some young people in charge to, to think of stuff or just make adjustments or just build a bunch of robots that can take care of the old people because you know there's not gonna be enough young people to take care of the old people one of the top comments on next shark was hey just send a bunch of Koreans over there. Yeah, and then the Koreans will buoy. Because we'll, obviously, we'll if you look at the uh, global rankings, Korea is the number one Asian country by drinking by far. It's not number one, though. Moldova is actually number well, one. Well, David, have you ever had a yogurt soju? <laughs> Why wouldn't Koreans drink the most? It is so good. <laughs> it is good no but Guys. honestly too the japanese they're super old school with their sake they just got like snow and like crystal dry and all that stuff they're not really being on trend like the koreans where the koreans they'll mix soju with whatever that's like popping at the moment yogurt soju you know green tea soju this soju that soju they'll just make any soju to make it popping but i feel like japanese are still like kind of like sushi you know they don't want to mess with it they're being jiro like they're being traditionalist so i'm like yo maybe you need to update it if you want the young people to drink more and make some make some cool drinking games build the drinking game into the bottle have the bottle with a little spinner like abdomen yeah. unit who knows but yeah it's true if they did import koreans it would work because i believe it goes like this andrew it goes korea japan vietnam china china actually drinks the least out of everybody david china drinks the least i'm shocked they have baiju that stuff is gross, man. Yeah. Also a product in dire need of a modern update. My goodness. I actually have had one Baiju in my life that was kind of good, but everything else has been very, What very do you harsh. think, Andrew? Do you think Japan should open up immigration, open up tourism? Like, what can it do other than, like, having this 80-year-old uncle solution to, like, being like, hmm, everybody just take four more shots of sake. Dude, I think Japan is going to try to figure it out on their own. If I know anything about the Japanese spirit, man, they feel like they it's can do it. It's an island country. Yeah. They feel like they can do it. And I think that there's a chance that, you know, it's just, man, these, it's going to be painful for a lot of people and a lot of governments and a lot of, I mean, America's going through some things right now that we got to figure out. So everybody's trying to figure stuff out. So this Sake Viva campaign is not even the craziest thing that's gonna happen, trust me. My overall takeaway, I'll end with this, is that uh, I think a lot of the East Asian countries are going to, like you said, have in-house solutions at first. Whether those work or not, I'm a little bit more bearish on it. And then the, we'll need to see the ultra traditional old school attitudes, how they deal with being more like insular thinking. Like, do they accept immigration? What are immig their immigration policies? Do they put mad restrictions? I mean, if they're even like iffy on letting tourism open up right now, immigration's like way down the line. I think with tourism, what they could do is like maybe make sure people spend an extra amount of money or give them a discount if they preload 10 G's on like a Japan tourism card. You know, basically use like the Disney methods of extracting monetization from like your fan base oh give them free drink tickets when they land buy one get two Suntory. hey buy ichi get that andrew buy ichi get knee japan ichiban japan ichiban hey drink Suntory. get that yeah, Andrew, I mean, you did just find a, like, Japanese song that is, like, one of your top play tracks right now. It's Shout popping. out to Takayan, too. All right, everybody, let us know in the comments down below what you think this problem means for Japan and what do you think the possible solutions are? Because, you know, a lot of societies and a lot of countries do look at Japan as almost like some type of glimpse into the future. So maybe these are things that other people are going to be dealing with in maybe a decade or two. Who knows? You think Shohei Otani could help? I don't even know if he drinks that much, but I don't know. Maybe Shohei... Yeah, he Best looks baseball like, player right now. Looks like you pack a few beers. All right, everybody. Again, thank you so much for watching the Hot Pot Boys. And until next time, we out. Peace.
Arigato. Japan